Spoilage, what is it? The Lecture on Energetic Damage, Part 4. If the connection between the subconscious and evil eye or vampirism can be easily diagnosed and removed, in the case of a vampire, it is enough just to cut off the interaction, to cut off contact altogether, to clean up your consciousness, avoid aggressive environments, and learn to detect larvae that attach to you. When it comes to spoilage, it is not as easy because things that occur at the informational layers of consciousness do not manifest themselves straight away. Take a virus, for example. A virus is similar to evil eye and vampirism, it manifests itself instantly, and when it gets into a body, after three days at the most, you've felt it all, you've experienced all the effects, snot and tears, and all kinds of colds. But a spoilage is probably similar to a bacterium. It already possesses some type of intellect, and if a virus simply needs to attach itself to something and continue to exist inside a donor's cell, then a bacteria is already a cell by its nature. It has the core that can think, and this core doesn't simply want to attach to just anything. It wants to find itself a living environment. And this environment needs to be prepared first. This is why a spoilage, once it gets into the energetical body of a person, will not manifest itself immediately but will first prepare a suitable living environment. Thus, not so much to replace a consciousness with itself, but rather to prepare a consciousness, to make it a nurturing environment for itself. That is why a spoilage is considered an informational system that begins at the level of the mental body. Since this program is created in the image and likeness of a cell, we understand that creating it just like that would be difficult. It is usually created with the help of a certain third force. And when we talk about a spoilage, we always refer to a specifically created program, a program created for a purpose, with a third force always participating in this creation. That is why, with greater probability, a spoilage can be performed only by a professional sorcerer and with the help of a force that he works with because there should always be a core. And the core that a sorcerer puts into a spoilage is an informational component. It is the reason why the spoilage is created, just like a bacterium would create a suitable energo informational environment for its life and reproduction, a spoilage will first create the necessary environment for its life and reproduction. The spoilage, or what is commonly called malediction, and in energo informational sciences, is called a program that aims to change a person for the worse. To cause a spoilage relates to spoil, ruin, in the sense of worsening, making something more simple and simplified. That is, doing something to a consciousness in order to cause it to begin reducing its own existential volume, to make it stop resisting the fact that it will no longer be a person, an individual, but an environment for nutrition, an environment for the survival of something else. That is precisely how spoilage works. And to do so, it should be programmed in a certain way and gradually change a person's consciousness from the inside to such an extent that it will agree to not being just a donor but a carrier of another mind. With the main task to feed that other mind. When a spoilage gets into consciousness, it usually hits the level of the mental body. It is always some mental attitude, a certain mental incantation. It may be a word spoken in a special way, but it's not a simple word, it's a word that comes at the right time, in the right place, it's a kind of spell, a spell that can be custom made for a particular person.
And here, the question comes up, can a spoilage be imposed on any person, and can any person impose spoilage onto others? The answer to both questions is, no, there must be a manifestation of vulnerability in the consciousness in order for a spoilage to get inside, and this vulnerability must be found first, and secondly, it must be manifested, or in other words, demonstrated. Therefore, a certain blank area must first appear within the mental body of a person, a blank area not filled with attention or an area specifically wiped of a certain kind of information. As you understand, one can usually easily spoil an ignorant person, someone who doesn't know much. Say a word to him, say a word he doesn't understand, say a word in an unknown language, and he will get scared, this word will stick to the mental body. In the astral body, this fright will immediately become an energo-informational battery for this incomprehensible word, an incomprehensible phrase, or an incomprehensible picture of the world that is not confirmed by own experience. Then the program starts to work all by itself, where the informational component of the core, the core of this bacterium, the core of this program, creates mitochondria in the form of astral marks that will also feed it. And the outer membrane is the condition for the existence of a spoilage, a person must give this program a reason to inhabit him. What can this reason be? Wrong actions or wrong words. And what do we mean by wrong? Words spoken to a wrong person at the wrong time that are diminishing someone else's rights. Meaning that either you or someone else gave a reason for it either through his action or inaction or by a word uttered to diminish someone else's rights. But when does a spoilage have the right to enter? Only if you have diminished the rights of someone whose rights you were not allowed to infringe on. The principles of the caste system are always at work here. And no matter how much we try to deny it, sooner or later, we come to an understanding that people are not all equal, they are not equal to each other. They are not equal in the level of their consciousness, the level of their existential volume, the level of their ability to impact reality, the level of their responsibility before this reality, and the level of their ruling power. And therefore, a woman who trash talks the government puts herself at risk. A man who badmouths other women or his boss puts himself at risk. He simply exposes himself to risk since he broke the rules, broke rank, giving a cause to forces that are probably controlling the destinies, lives, and activities of those whom he has harmed, gave a cause to see him as a threat. Accordingly, this cause is a reason to put, to stick a program into his consciousness, which will neutralize such actions in the future. Thus, as if trapping a person inside a cocoon and thereby saying, if you want to be bad, be bad, but within these limits here, that is, eat your own dirt, so that it no longer affects everyone else. In this way, a program is formed, which limits the activity of such a person and accordingly places a seal on him such as, this person doesn't understand. The world he is in, his activity must be restricted. And a person might also not stop such behavior at once but go on with it and continue behaving that way, slinging mud at others without realizing that from now on, he has no right to the life and mental space of those surrounding him. And after a while, there are so many of these negative emotions within him that he ends up creating his own larvae. And then this larvae starts doing the work that, as a matter of fact, it is supposed to do, eating up a person sometimes up to his total, personal, lethal outcome. Thus, a person begins to lose his rights. These rights, as well as rights in general, are not an energy-based component but rather an informational one. These rights go as a payment to a person who was harmed. And if certain forces stand behind this person that protects him, they will simply transfer these rights to the one who was illegitimately harmed, 
This is the way that rights get redistributed, unless, of course, the person himself doesn't give a reason for this. For example, by belittling himself and behaving as if he were equal to everyone else. In that sense, you can't call out to justice because you put yourself in this situation single-handedly, receiving an energy breach in the form of an evil eye as a consequence. Still, you are the one who made this happen, in any case, a spoilage is a program created to make a person lose the possessed rights. Once again, as much as we would like to think otherwise, there must be something that provoked this action, or in other words, some actual harm that someone received on your behalf. It is considered that in this world, those who practice magic have more rights than those who don't. The cause lies in the fact that there's someone standing behind such a person, some kind of force, black, white, green, higher, lower, doesn't matter. What matters is that he isn't alone any longer, there are two of them. A person with a strong family is less likely to suffer from a spoilage compared to a man who stands alone, a lone wolf. A man who works for the government is less likely to get a spoilage than someone who works for himself, the logic is clear someone has to stand behind a person. Under certain rules, under certain conditions, there is always a contractual agreement between a person and his government, between a person and his demons, between a person and his God, it doesn't matter whom it is with, there are contractual relationships, conditions according to which a force would flow through this person, through his consciousness. And by an agreement, we mean precisely the current of force, and not a piece of paper that we sign in blood with some sort of creepy substance. No, of course not, it is the consciousness which a force is flowing through. This state of consciousness is called the implementation of an agreement, and it is the current of force that is called the agreement, and not the piece of paper. So in order for a spoilage to function, there must be a reason, there must be a cause, there must be a fault. And this is a very important point, Insult of a higher standing person is a fault, attempting to take other people's rights without asking is a fault, provoking others to give away their rights is a fault, the spoilage, being an artificial program, once it gets into the consciousness, into the mental body, doesn't manifest itself immediately. At the same time, unlike the already mentioned jinx and vampirism, a spoilage can easily be done from a distance. It is enough to have a clear mental image of the person or some element of their human activity and it will be done through a sympathetic connection. There must be a certain ritual. What is a ritual? A ritual is a sequence of actions that connects the sorcerer's consciousness with the source of a certain force, primarily with an informational force, since an agreement is, first of all, the current of force, and a force is information not energy. We do clearly remember that we receive energy from the earth, so, this earthly current connects with some kind of specific, very specific information, and an energo-informational program is formed similar to a bacterium, similar to larvae or spoilage that then gets attached and follows a certain direction. At a certain point, it reaches its destination, gets into the mental body of a person, and begins to spread itself like a cancer. Not even like a tumor, but rather a bacterium because bacterial colonies are, in nature, probably the visual analogs that mirror the best way how a spoilage would manifest itself and this bacterial colony multiplies to such an extent until it squeezes out and replaces any other beneficial bacterium, that is, any other programs that are present in the mental body, at that moment, in the mental body. The picture of the world is being, as if replaced, and the person starts thinking differently about himself, thinking differently about others, his goal setting changes, and he begins to behave himself accordingly. And this is how a spoilage can be recognized and diagnosed, precisely by the change in a person's behavior. A person starts to talk in a certain way, only by swearing, for example, or using some specific words that continuously begin to slip through in his consciousness. You can always recognize a person with such a program in their consciousness by the presence of these words, parasite words, by critical markers in the words used. A person begins to act in a certain way, 
his behavior becomes kind of repetitive. I think you know about certain behaviors of people with autism. It is similar here, but it is not a disability or an innate factor, but an acquired function, like a certain psychosis. You know, there are people who are afraid that their hands are dirty, and so they wash them every five minutes or comb their hair every five minutes. And so people, who are prone to receive a spoilage or those who already have one, they too acquire these habits of some specific repetitive action, permanent action. Although if you look at the world around you, then in principle, one could say that the whole world is under a spoilage. Judging by how everybody is stuck in their phones, is this not a specific action program to check your news feeds every five minutes? In some sense, this also is a kind of mental spoilage. By the way, this type of spoilage is called programming. Programming is a different type of spoilage with other causes and another emphasis, but their essence is the same. When a sorcerer spoils a person, as a rule, only the sorcerer himself is able to remove the spoilage since he knows the very word, the word that lies at the base of the core. It can be removed by a higher system, for example by a very high-level egregore, such as a religious egregore, but the egregore of a state would not be able to do so, as it has slightly different rules and purposes, but it could as if cover a person and reprogram his mental body for a certain time while this person serves the state, for example. Thereby this program, the spoilage wouldn't disappear anywhere but rather seem to dry up, as if being put on pause, put on freeze, but if the person stops working for this or the other egregore, then the program would resume, and things would turn back on the same way as they were before. Once again, imposing a spoilage upon somebody is not so easy, and what is usually called spoilage, such as when people say, oh, I received a spoilage, oh a neighbor put a spoilage on me, it is actually not quite so, most likely it's just an ordinary jinx, which manifests itself as ordinary evil eye. A spoilage is a serious program that aims at taking away the person's rights by slowly draining them, gradually draining them out. And here, Again, we must remember that it is not possible to cause a spoilage without a reason, which means that if a spoilage has occurred, then once, under some circumstances, the person has provided a reason for it, in this case, it's not just a protrusion, someone's stand-up behavior or appearance that gives a vampire a reason, as if showing that, here I am your donor, eat me for breakfast. Here it is different, someone took someone else's rights, insulted a higher standing person, or took something that didn't belong to him, thus, a woman who would steal another woman's husband must either belong to a higher caste or prepare herself to sooner or later be hit by something similar to a spoilage. And this marriage or relationship with someone else's partner, it will lead to no good, and this is very important to understand. A spoilage cannot be cast at someone without a fault, just like someone without fault cannot be cursed. However, a curse is a much more serious matter.